Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. And I will have links below this video to their sites. Here, Rabbi Shalom Arash, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yossi Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Lona Navar, Rabbi Yuval Avadi, Rabbi Daniel Aster, Nisan Baruch Black, David Sachs, Rabbi Michael Skobek, Jews for Judaism, Rabbi David Asher, and Rabbi Ron Ruvain. As well, if you've never checked out this channel before, I will have a link right below this video to my first video, which explains what MLM for the soul means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So this is again taken from the weekly Parsha Insights from Rabbi Eli Mansur. And this is related to Parsha Toldot, or Toldos, however you pronounce it. And that will be the upcoming Parsha. And I call this having the means to support others. So the story told in Parsha Toldot of the blessing which Yitzhak wished to give to Esau undoubtedly ranks among the most difficult stories in the entire Torah. Many questions arise when studying this story. First and foremost, how is it possible that Yitzhak decided to grant his blessing to Esau instead of Yaakov? Could we possibly imagine that Yitzchak, one of the nation's three patriarchs, was blind to Esau's wicked nature? Yaakov was a, quote, dweller of tents, a diligent study, student of Torah. Why would Yitzchak prefer to bless Esau? So Rivka's involvement also requires explanation. If we look at the content of the blessing which Yitzchak gave Yaakov, thinking he was Esau, we see that he blessed him with material prosperity. He blessed him that Hashem should grant him from the, quote, the dew of the heavens and from the fat of the earth an abundance of grain and wine. Why was Rivka so insistent that Yaakov receive this blessing? Yaakov, as mentioned, was devoted to Torah study to a life of spirituality. Does he really need a blessing of wealth? Um, can we imagine anybody trying to encourage Chacham Ovadi Yosef Zatzal to receive a blessing that he should own a luxury car and a large private swimming pool? At first glance, this is precisely what happens in our parasha. Rivka urges Yaakov, who devoted himself exclusively to Torah learning, to disguise of Esau so he could receive a blessing of wealth. So the Imre Noam, which is Rav Meir Harwitz of Dizkov, answers these questions by postulating that Yitzhak envisioned Yaakov and Esau and their descendants following the arrangement that would later be followed by the tribes of Yisachar and Zavulun. In Yaakov's blessings to his sons, he foresaw that the tribe of Yisachar would diligently devote itself to study Torah, or to Torah study, and would be supported by Zavulun, who would work as a merchant and earn, merchants and earn money. Yitzhak figured that this system would be followed not, with a, not within Am Yisrael, but by Yaakov and Esau, meaning all of Yaakov's descendants would immerse themselves in Torah and would be supported by Esau. So Yitzhak made this assumption because already in his time he was supported by Esau, because Esau would hunt animals and feed Yitzhak. Naturally then, Yitzhak assumed that this would continue in the future, with Esau working and supporting Yaakov, who would immerse himself in full-time Torah study, or Torah learning. So this was Yitzhak's intent in granting Esau a special blessing of material prosperity. He wanted to bless Esau that he would enjoy financial success so he could support both himself and his brother. Yitzchak saw Esau and his descendants as the supporters of Yaakov and his descendants, and he therefore blessed Esau with wealth. But Rivka, however, knew this would not work. She understood Esau's true nature, that he had no intention of supporting his brother. There was no question in her mind, and she was correct, that if Esau would be blessed with wealth, he would keep it to himself and not support Yaakov. Therefore, Rivka needed to do everything possible to ensure that Yaakov would receive this blessing. If the blessing of material prosperity would go to Esau, Yaakov and his offspring would be left impoverished. Without a source of sustenance, because Esau and his descendants would not support him. So it just shows you, we know the nature of Esau. So Rivka that, thus knew that Yaakov needed to receive both blessings, spiritual greatness and material success, which would be divided among his descendants, some of whom would earn money and lend support to, the, uh, to others, who immerse themselves in Torah. Esau, she realized, could not be relied on to support Yaakov. So it turns out that, then that Rivka acted as she did for the vital purpose of saving Torah learning. If Esau had received the blessing of wealth and Yaakov hadn't, then Yaakov's descendants would be left with only spirituality, without the material means they needed to, to support themselves. So the message of this explanation of the story is that any wealth Am Yisrael enjoys has been given to us for the purpose of supporting Torah study. We have always had a scholarly class immersing itself in learning and being supported by the rest of the nation. And this arrangement must always be continued. Those who have been blessed with material wealth owe their success to Yitzhak's blessing, which was granted to Yaakov solely for the purpose of supporting Torah and ensuring that it will be preserved among our nations for all eternity. Because yes, it's very important to continue having the Torah study because that's what keeps the world afloat as well. Without it, I don't know that Hashem would keep the world going. We need that. So that's very important that we all do that and maintain that and that we will all marry to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMikdash. Amen and thanks for watching.